side. Back in motion. Seagulls are going to pass it and complete it down the right side. It'll be a first down. Lions Kamal Stewart picking up his first tackle of the game. It'll be another first and ten. Across midfield this time on the 47. A little misdirection. They try to go right up the gut. Mike Ryan before. Got a few. Let's see where the spot is with 10.30 on the clock. Here in the first, that'll be second and three. Salisbury already has four first downs. Looking for their fifth, they pass. It was tipped at the front line. Nice push for the Lions defensive ends there. Nate Steffen in the mix as well as Tyler Foster. It'll be third and three in an interesting spot here for Salisbury. I, I don't know if it's two down territory. Salisbury already with 112 rushing yards. Some personnel changes late. And an offside on the Lions makes it a first and 10 for Salisbury now on the 35. The same pitch, can the Lions get him in the backfield? It's about a gain of one, but good read by the Lions defense. Joshua Alexander there you can see right on the ball looking to get some push here on second and nine. Busted through the line on that last play. Makes it a one-yard gain. Do the lines move early? I don't see any flag, but there's nice blocking on this near side. It looks like Danny Vital was in the mix. Chad Gleason, the junior running back, 5'8", 180 pounds. Strong around the left side, and it's third and two now. Ball on the 27, under nine minutes to play in this first quarter. Gleason, after the seven yard run, lines up again, it's Nowitzki. Just looking for a couple yards and the Lions gobble it up for no gain. It will be fourth and short. Depending on the spot, it might be one yard remaining.
on fourth down. Do they get him? It all depends on the spot here. This side judge coming in, and we might have a measurement by the chains. Again, it all depends on this spot, and that middle referee's going to call it first down. No chains necessary. Nowitzki on the QB keeper comes up with a couple of yards, and it's first and 10. Ball on the 25 just outside the red zone. Nowitzki drops back for the pass, looking deep, and he gets sacked in the backfield. I believe it was Tyler Foster in on the play. Ryan Rapp, excuse me. Foster was close as well. Rapp number 46 for the Lions in the black uniforms. Comes up with a big sack, makes it second and 15. See if we can keep pushing the Seagulls out of field goal range as Nowitzki under center. Two backs. Got a little too dicey for the pitch. He wanted to. Ended up having to just dive for as many yards as he can. Another QB keeper. It's third and very long. They may have given him one yard, but it's a long 15. Nowitzki looking over towards the sideline. Gets the play call. Running in and out is Hunter Cleaver, the sophomore wide receiver. He lines up on the near side. He's guarded by Omar Cisse. It's a screen. Can they find the hole? It looks like the Lions may have just stopped it. It's going to be fourth and short. indicated by the referees to confirm. And Salisbury is going to be going for it here on fourth and two within the red zone. Same exact situation as a couple plays ago on fourth and two, and it ended up being a broken down play. Nowitzki kept it and forced his way into the pile and got two yards. Let's see what happens here. Nowitzki again under center. He's going to keep it again. Does the tackle move him forward? It all depends on the spot. Can the Lions get the turnover? And it looks like they do. The defense holding up strong in their own red zone. It'll be Lions ball. Jimmy LaHaye coming out. 536 remaining in the first. That's good for this Lions defense to see. They can make a stop under pressure. Try and stop the bleeding early on. LaHaye with the handoff. A couple yards gained by Bootman. Let's take a look at last season's matchup. Despite two weather delays, the Seagulls did down the Lions 48-14 to behind 34 unanswered points. Senior quarterback Jimmy LaHaye went 14 for 36 in that game, aired out for 157 yards, no touchdowns or interceptions. Former Lion Kyle Dickerson had 59 total offensive yards and a rushing touchdown, and sophomore Kevin Zayner added 53 yards in his debut that game. Salisbury... Assume the Wamping 654 rushing yards as a team, averaging 10.5 yards a carry as we have a flag on the field. Of those yards, 237 and two touchdowns came from Michael Mofor, who's made a couple plays already tonight. Two more touchdowns were scored by Jacob Phillip and Kadarius Campbell, adding 108 yards to that total, and it was a flag on the Lions. It's second and nine. Second and 14 now after the flag. Ball on the 12. And the Lions better be careful as they're backing into their own end zone. A little bit of a soft snap. LaHaye rolling out. Throwing across his body and it was intercepted.
Vigella, the sophomore linebacker, comes up with that interception and gives the Seagulls the ball right back, right about where they turned it over. So no harm, no foul, just some time off the clock with 4.26 remaining in the first. Albright drive was negative four yards after the penalties and failed rushing attempts. Nowitzki steps back, airs it out, a fade in the end zone. They're going to say he was just out of bounds. They actually did come up with the catch. Octavian Wilson, the senior wide receiver. He's from Milford, Delaware. Went up and got it, just a little out of bounds. There is no little in football, you're either out or in. Nowitzki with the incomplete pass. They line it up again, third and eight. It'll be interesting. We've already seen them go for it on fourth down several times. Nowitzki on the quarterback keeper, just a few. No harm, no foul. It'll be third and about four. Jefferson comes up with the tackle for the Lions. Armand, the free safety, coming up in the hole, making the play. Fourth and four. Just inside the red zone, you hear the Lions bench chanting defense, trying to urge their team on to another fourth down stop and turnover. Can they do it? Nowitzki under center. He holds on to it wide open in the corner of the end zone. Number 17, Hunter Cleaver. And the run pass option works out for the Seagulls. All of the Lions defense were cheating in, looking to stuff the run. And Cleaver broke out wide open on that left near corner. And with 3.06 to play, the Seagulls about to go up 21 nothing. yard touchdown for Cleaver. And it's up and in 21 nothing. We're going to take a break here on albrightathletics.com. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Bootman and Jordan lined up on the end zone looking for this Shrek and Gost kick. His fourth kickoff of this first quarter. Lions bring it out to the 24. It's first and 10. LaHaye leading the offense back onto the field. Looks to get Thorpe involved early in this drive. We haven't seen too much of him just yet. Lions looking to throw early. Octavian Wilson, Leonard 
Prue in the mix. That was to Zach Miller. Miller on this right side in the red arm sleeve, red socks, red cleats. Gain of four. It's second and six, ball on the 28. The Lions hammering home this formation. The two receivers on the left, one on the right, and a running back in the backfield. LaHaye in the shotgun gets the snap. Looks to throw again. Almost intercepted again. It looked like it was off the face mask of the Seagulls defender on that far side. It'll be third and six. Harkham on the far side. I don't think it was anticipating a pass that fast to him with Zayner cutting towards the center of the field. Third and six, ball on the 28. Lions looking to convert a third down. They need it deep in their own territory. LaHaye drops back, plenty of time. Does he find him? He does. On the far side, it's Zayner that time connecting for the first down. Zayner, a nice route on that far left side. And the Lions convert. That was a 17-yard first down conversion. Pushed out of bounds by Sean Carroll. Under two to play in this first quarter. Lions looking to cross as LaHaye hands it off this time. A couple Seagulls get into the backfield and it will be Tony Thorpe fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of one. And you see that flag on the field. Let's wait for the call. That's going to be a foul on Christopher Williams, the defensive lineman. with a minute 37 left in the quarter over midfield I believe for the first time today looking for their first score down 21 it's first and 10 after the penalty and they're right in front of us here we're up in the box on about the 35-40 yard line. LaHaye needs to move in the pocket and he gets sacked. Down goes LaHaye. Down Sam Pavlik, the defensive lineman, number 90 in white. He's a junior, six foot, 215 pounds. LaHaye made the first man miss, couldn't avoid the second and just not enough time in the pocket. Lions signaling in the play. Five on the play clock for LaHaye, who just gets the snap off. And it's going to be a little pass to get back to the line of scrimmage. That one was to Malik Bootman. And a little more. It'll 
It'll be third and eight. And the Lions might just let this one go. There's 10 seconds left on the clock. They're lining up. Maybe see if they can get a cheap penalty here with one second left. Nobody jumps on either side, and that will do it for the first quarter. Salisbury 21, Albright 0. It's third and eight. Ball on the 38. We're going to take a quick break here on AlbrightAthletics.com. Make sure you stick with us for the second quarter. Switching sides at the break. Third and eight, lines looking to convert. They've only had three first downs. Looking for their fourth. Did he have his feet in? They're going to say it was a catch. I believe that was Mike Jordan. It was. Gets the first down. The Lions putting together a little bit of a drive here, taking advantage of a penalty or two by the Seagulls. And they're inching closer, first and 10 on the 27-yard line. LaHaye in the shotgun. Looks to hand it off to Bootman, and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. I, I got the first quarter stats in front of me. The leading rushers for Salisbury, Mike Mofor and Michael Fowler, each tied with 57 yards gained. Both 57. Wow. On the other side, Thorpe leading the way with four, and Bootman had one. You can see just the difference in rushing yards there. Fourteen rushes for 124 yards for Salisbury, and they almost come up with another interception. That should have been probably the fourth one for the Seagulls. In and out of the hands, right off the chest plate. Lions get lucky again. It's third and nine. On the other side, the Lions right now, five rushes for three yards. A couple losses there, as you can tell. And that's the key stat, making this game 21 nothing early. Time of possession, actually not too bad. 8.07 to 6.53. The Lions have had the ball, and you can see it here, bleeding this drive into the second quarter. Let's see if we can convert it into some points. It's third and nine. You'd love to get any form of points on the board just to prove this drive meant something. The receiver got tripped up. It was Jordan again, so let's see if they bring out the kicking team or go for it on fourth and nine. LaHaye in the shotgun. 20 on the play clock. Getting a little breezy here as the sun goes down at Gene L. Shirk Stadium. Lions need nine. They go to Jordan again. There was a flag. He still brought it in. And that's going to be a first down. 
I presume it'll be a pass interference called against the Seagulls. Nice play by Jordan, showing some muscle there and bringing that ball in. Waiting on the call from the referees. They're going to call a face mask penalty. I thought it was pass interference. Still no number called on who that was on. Lions need to punch it in here. It's first and four. Ball on the four. LaHaye in the shotgun. Hands it off right up the gut. Maybe one or two. Lions still in the negative average rush per attempt. Maybe one more into the end zone will get them back to even. They do have 58 total receiving yards, 77 after that last play, 30 more than the Seagulls. Second and two. LaHaye to Jordan, and he earned that one doing all the work that drive. And another play with a lot of contact, and he comes up with the touchdown. Mike Jordan made the nice play. There was some interference, you know, some action up around his face mask, and got the big first down on fourth and long, and now gets the touchdown as well. LaHaye rewarding his receiver. Chris Knopp on the field for the extra point, looking to cut this deficit to 14. And some life here by the Lions late in the first into the second quarter. A nice extended drive. Give your defense a break. And the field goes up. And in there was another flag down on the field. Let's see what the referee calls. This will affect the kickoff, I assume. I think I just saw an indication for a tripping penalty against Salisbury. I was correct from the indication there from the referee and the Lions decline it. We'll take the extra point and it's 21 to seven, some life here with 12.34 remaining in the first half. Salisbury, that penalty there late, it was their second for a total of 19 yards so far. Free yardage given back to the Lions, and they make the Seagulls pay. It'll be not back on the field for the kickoff. Twenty-one to seven with twelve forty-three is Knopp kicks this one high and short, received at about the fifteen yard line by Salisbury, looking to make something happen. They find a hole down the right side and pushed out of bounds. That was Damian King, the senior linebacker, helping out on special teams as well. As the crowd continues to grow here. Lions defense back on the field. The 
Nowitzki right now with the 256 QBR. Three completions on four attempts, throwing 75%, 47 total yards, and a touchdown that long of 19. Someone in the crowd just teasing us. Popcorn's whifting up into the box. You smell that? Oh my gosh, it smells delicious. Might need a halftime snack. It'll be second and short. Two yards to go. Nowitzki with the misdirection. I think the Lions clocked up that hole. It depends on the forward progress spot. This side referee came in. I think it'll be third and one. See if the Lions can hold off one more play. Ball on the 50 and a half, call it the 51 yard line. Salisbury averaging 8.3 rush yards per attempt, 133 total. And they get the first down and plenty more. Can he catch a block? He does. It'll be first and 10, Mike Mofor. Rushes it all the way to the 34. It'll be first and 10. Kamal Stewart on this right side. Gain of a few on the handoff. It'll be second and eight. Ball on the 32. Lions defense. Hold strong on that one. A little miscommunication. That was Cleaver who slowed up on his route on that left sideline. Would have been an easy walk-in touchdown for the Seagulls. Lions hold on again. It's going to be third and eight. Nowitzki now three for six. He's looked for Mo for the most tonight. Seven attempts. Next closest is Fowler. And a little misdirection, and the pitch with a lead blocker, and that should do it as they cross the end zone, make it 27 nothing. a well-designed play. A little misdirection gets the lines going the opposite way, and it was a jailbreak from there on. They had a lead blocker as well, didn't even have to do anything. Looking to make it 28-7. to on the field is Bert Schrokengost. Dead straight. It actually hit the American flag if you're watching closely. Right down the middle, 28 to seven, under 10 to play here in the first half.
Bootman and Jordan back for the lines, and that kick goes out the back of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Lions will bring it back out. LaHaye is 7 for 12 for 60 total yards, throwing 58.3%. Long of 17, that was to Jordan. It was also right before that touchdown throw. LaHaye with two in the backfield, two to his right, one in the slot on the left, and they're looking to pass on first down. A little miscommunication on the route on the far side. Second and ten after the incomplete pass. Miller on the right side. It's Miller and Zayner. Zayner in the slot. And LaHaye hands it off. This time to Bootman. Gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one on forward progress. Regardless, it'll be third and long. Bernardo came up with that fumble recovery in the first in on the tackle there. Bernardo, as we said, that inside linebacker wearing number five. A little movement from him. Bootman sneaks into the slot. Lions looking to air it out to Jordan. And it was too far out of bounds. I was watching the ball in the air. Was there a late hit? Because there's a flag in the backfield. Lucas Roselli. Excuse me. 33, Robert Jadick for the Seagulls. A roughing the passer, 15-yard penalty. That gives the Lions a first down on the 42. 9.04 remaining in the half. It would be awesome if the Lions could cut this deficit. Make it 28-14 here late. Take that momentum into the locker room. LaHaye, big dude. He stood in there and took it. He's one of the bigger players on the entire field. But a roughing the passer is a roughing the passer. That was Tony Thorpe looking to get him in the mix more as this game goes on, gain of a couple. It's second and nine officially. If not 100% of the snaps, close to LaHaye in the shotgun formation. So when you're seeing Thorpe or Bootman or whoever's in the backfield battling to get a few yards, it only turns out being one or two because they're already five yards deep in the backfield. And we see it again right here. This time they tuck it and throw. Looking for Miller, who wasn't ready for the hot potato. It's going to be third and long. Play clock running down. There's three. LaHaye's going to get it off just in time. Third and nine. Has to air it out. And it's picked off. Derek Wright, the D-back. 
comes up with the interception. Athletic play by him. And the Seagulls already in the offensive side of the field. Nowitzki drops back. They're looking for it all on the first play. Wide open. Can he get into the end zone? Yes, he does. Damian King fighting off defenders. And that nice little fade route towards the pylon. One play, another touchdown. Does that sound familiar from the first quarter? 34-7 with 8.04 remaining in the half. Looking to make it 35 right down the middle again. Lions down by a few. In the lines, another touchback will bring it out to the 25. After a delay of game, Jimmy LaHaye trying to avoid all defenders, and there's three that get him in the backfield for a huge loss. And after the penalty and the sack for loss, it is <laughs> second and 23. It, it looks even longer than that. Second and 23, Lions scary close to their own end zone. Have to avoid the touchback here. LaHaye going deep down the right side. Cannot connect with Zayner. It's now third and long. The last thing going to be right now is Chris Knopp thinking, oh no, I have to take this punt from the end zone. Always scary. I see him inching towards the field on the sideline.
third and very long. Let's see if the Lions could get a little chunk. You don't need it all here. Just give your guys some space. Give your special team some room to work. See if they can make a play on the other side. There's five seconds on the play clock. Low snap. LaHaye's going to keep it. See if he could barrel forward for a few yards. Gain of maybe four or five. Fourth and 17. LaHaye is going to stay on and punt. He's listed as the backup punter. Chris Knopp, after that last punt attempt on the other side of the field, if you remember, went off the side of his foot, maybe went all of 25 yards. So Coach Markska giving his quarterback a chance to get one away. Pretty good. The Seagulls looking to return. Can the Lions box him in? No, they give up so many yards. All he needs is one block. Oh, wow. Brought it all the way back down towards the 15. And the Salisbury bench loving it. Already in the red zone. Let's see if there's a holding anywhere. There is a flag down on the field. Ten yards from the spot on a block in the back. That'll bring the ball all the way back towards almost midfield. Right at about the 48. Gain of a couple. Nowitzki in on the rush. An athletic quarterback. You know, I, I read some of his stats from last year. Didn't play as much. Getting his chance this year. The junior QB, 5'8", 170 from Shrewsbury, New Jersey. Shown a ton of athleticism tonight. Made some nice touch passes. We've seen him go deep. A couple QB keepers that were planned and some broken down plays that he turned into magic. And oh no, would you look at that. No wrap up and Mike Mofor puts the whole line's defense in the spin cycle. They stood him up. No one wrapped and tackled. And that long run makes it a 41-7 to game. Wow, big plays, the name of the game for Salisbury offense tonight, just making Albright pay for it. Wow. That was a 39-yard run officially. I, I was waiting for the call. 39 yards officially, and Shrekin Ghost gets the successful extra point attempt, making it 42-7, to 534 remaining in the half. After that, ready for this stat, fans at home. Rushing yards comparison right now. Salisbury at 235 rushing yards. Albright at just one. Wow. Receiving yards a little more equal, 96 to 79. That at least looks more respectable. And oh no, we're getting the popcorn up here again. I know what I'm doing at halftime. Running down to the snack bar. 534 remaining. Let's see if the Lions could put together a drive here, march down the field, and get a few points heading into the locker room. 42 to 7 as Schrokengost 
This one a little more line drive than we've seen tonight, but still effective through the back of the end zone. Lions get to take it out to the 25. LaHaye with two in the backfield. Two receivers to his right. A handoff to Bootman. Makes a man miss and squirts through a couple defenders. Gain of about two. Under five to play. LaHaye looking to throw, finds Jordan. Battles, gets the first down, and I believe there's going to be another face mask penalty. Yep, that's what the referee's indicating, so tack on more yards to the end of that. They're going to be close to midfield. Mike Jordan has been bullied tonight, and he's just been responding with plays after plays. That interference, that's the second face mask penalty against him. He had the touchdown that had a lot of contact around it. He's working tonight. Forty two to seven. Four and a half remaining in the first. The Lions across midfield. Like I said, put together a little drive, get some momentum back. Gain of about one, one and a half yards. It'll be second and long. Bootman now, five attempts, seven total yards. LaHaye gets the snap, looks to throw, finds Jordan. Again, close to that first down. I think he has it, yes. Another one converted. That's the ninth first down for the Lions. They're starting to drive down the field here. Plenty of timeouts left. No issue there. Both teams with three. The Lions getting close to striking distance. The sun setting. LaHaye looking to avoid the sack. Just throws that one away. Bernardo thought that was a live ball hustling after it. It'll be second and ten. A four-player switch on Salisbury defensive side. The Lions looking over for the play call. LaHaye looks to the right. Double move, and it was overthrown. The play was there, though. Bootman... Made a nice play. Miller as well. The hitch and go. That almost was open towards the middle of the field as well. It's going to be third and ten. Obviously, two down territory with the time on the clock and where you're at on the field. So you don't need all of it right here. Look for five or six yards. Make it a manageable fourth and short. They do get a few close to that first down. 
Thorpe in the mix again. And they get almost all of it, one yard remaining, and there's going to be a timeout called on the field. It looks like by the Seagulls. Big play here, fourth and one. The clock's still running, and all the referees see that. They're going to have to reset. But there's about 2.48 left on this fourth and one. Ball on the 26 after that nine-yard rush attempt by Tony Thorpe. Stick with us during this time outbreak. Lions looking to score right before half. Thorpe flanking LaHaye. It's fourth and one. They're going to throw. And they get it completed to Miller, who gets pushed out of bounds for the first down. That was a seven yard out that Miller completed. Sean Carroll in on the tackle. LaHaye now in the red zone. Drops back. Looks towards Jordan who catches it. Makes a man miss. Makes another. And gets tackled from behind. That was a gain of about six or seven. The Lions threatening here as they're pushing up against the two-minute warning. LaHaye drops back. Another short, quick pass. This time it was to Zayner, who converts the first down. This is what the Lions need. Short, quick passes. Let your athletic receivers make their defender miss and dink and dunk it down the field. Four yards here, six there. Mix in a rush with Thorpe. It's been a good drive. Obviously, Salisbury in that prevent-type defense, and that, that leaves more holes open towards the line of scrimmage than usual, but the Lions need to implement some of these plays early in the second half. A rush for no gain. It'll be second down. And six. Just over a minute to play here for the Lions to try and punch this one in. They're on the six-yard line. Again, they've all their timeouts left. Under a minute to play. Keep an eye on if they use one here. If it's a failed rush. Did he cross the line? Yes, they're going to give it to him. That's going to be a touchdown for Malik Bootman. LaHaye with the six-yard pass. The out route. And Bootman makes a nice diving catch for the second touchdown for the Lions this game. Knopp was not on for the punt. He's back on for the kick. Let's see if he can convert. Lines going for the fake. Oh, no. The snapper could have probably held on to it straight into the end zone. 
the bad pass back results in a fumble, and it's 42 13. Knopp on for the kick. <clears throat> it's high and short, received at about the 15. And that was returned by number 26, Jamarcus Burnskin. 39.3 on the clock. Two timeouts left for Salisbury. That's key. Let's see what they do here. If they try to convert a couple plays quick, or are they just going to kneel on the ball and take their 42-13 lead into the locker room? I see the freshman QB, Dantas Wilson, warming up. So we'll see if LaHaye makes it out for the second half or if they think it's a little too foregone. Under 30. They can just run it out now with the play clock being about nine seconds higher than the game clock. And it looks like that's what the Seagulls are going to do, take their ball and head towards the locker room. I see the popcorn culprit right in front of us. I might have to find her at halftime. 42 to 13. Lions put together a nice drive late, come up with six points after the missed two-point conversion attempt off the fake. And that'll do it for us here. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back with some first-half stats and what to look forward to in the second half. Stick with us here on AlbrightAthletics.com. <laughs>
And we're back here about to start the second half at Gene L. Shirk Stadium. Thank you for tuning in to Albright Athletics. I'm your man, Dave Molinaro. If you're just tuning in, take a look at the scoreboard. The Seagulls leading big time right now, 42-13 to over the Albright Lions. Let's take a look at some of the stats. And one thing I wanted to point out was this Salisbury defense, led tonight by Xavier Harkham. He has six total tackles. Five of them are unassisted. One of them for a loss. Big, big plays by him. And just on the offensive side of the ball, Mike Mafour, 121 yards. His longest was 39. He has three touchdowns. Damien King as well, one touchdown. A couple other players in the high 30s, 40s, and 50s in rushing yards for Salisbury. Total offensive yards right now, they're at 335 compared to Albright's just 140. Similar in the first down battle, 12 to 11. But like I said, it, it's just that total yards. At one point early in the second quarter, the Lions were in negative and zero average rushing yards per attempt and total as well. They've just been shooting themselves in the foot. But that last drive, they, they worked their way down the field, worked the sidelines, quick passes, got the ball out fast. Earned a couple penalty calls against Salisbury, and that's because they were doing so well on offense. If, if they could continue that into this third quarter, we'll get some points back. <coughs> we are back with Bert Schreckengast. Going to kick it off. He's put it in the end zone every time. And right when I say it, he's five yards short. Jordan on the return, looking for a block. Trying to get around the corner. Swallowed up by four different defenders. It's a loose ball. Fumbled. The Lions recover. And they have just the kicker to beat. Plenty of blockers. And they return it all the way to the 20-yard line. They probably could have gotten more, but no one... Took care of the kicker. Wow. Lions got very lucky there as Jordan slow to get back. He knows he dodged a bullet. So Mike Jordan fumbles it at about the 18. And it's picked up and ran all the way down to the other 18 almost. Wow. Heads up play by the Lions. And it's first and 10 on the 18. That's a way to start off the, the half. Sometimes you need lucky plays like that, though. It happens. Lions looking to convert now on the other end. Malik Bootman gains a few. This is how it's officially down in the book. Mike Jordan returned it 15 yards to the 20. It was a fumble forced by Sam Pagella. We've heard his name a million times tonight. And then it was picked up for 61 yards by Ymir Lowry. Wow. 61 yards on top of the 15. The line's going for the end zone. Jordan redeems himself, gets one foot in, and taps it down. And that's a quick touchdown for the Lions. Sometimes you just need a bounce to go your way, and two drives in a row now, the Lions put it in the end zone. Remember, they're a point down compared to a typical, I'm going to say in quotes, football score because of the attempted trick two-point conversion instead of taking the field goal. So this extra point, one, would make it 20 points. Typically you'd see 21 with three touchdowns. And the line's going for two. LaHaye staying on the field. This time, no secrets about it. They need a couple of yards. LaHaye drops back. Quick throw in. And that's going to be a two-point conversion to Zach Miller. The Lions... 
Cut the deficit in half. It's 42-21. And some life for the black and red. Let's see what the Lions do here. They have the momentum. You don't want to give it up right away, but if they could sneak something here, I don't want to say an onside kick, but if they do and get the ball, the team would be juiced up. Two straight touchdowns in their last two drives. Let's see. Just keep an eye on it. Probably not, but I, I wouldn't be surprised as Chris Knopp lines up for the kick. And they get it away. Line drive towards the corner. Nice. Try to pin him down. Let's see who comes up with the big play. Stopped at about the 19. They're going to give him the 20 on forward progress. The Lions defense back out onto the field. Leading in tackles is Vieira, followed by Vital, Stefan, and Domino. They're all on the field looking for another stop here. Gain of about six. It'll be second and four, right up the middle. Nowitzki under center. Two receivers on the far side. Backs in motion. They hand it up the middle. And that should be a first down for number 23. Hopeton Mayer. He's the sophomore back. 5'10", 220 pounds from Waldorf, Maryland. It's going to be first and 10 on the 31. That was a five-yard rush tackled by Harris Dorman. The Lions looking to get some pressure. Nowitzki stuffed at the line of scrimmage. The QB keeper does not work. Harris Dorman again two plays in a row partially in on that tackle. It's going to be second and seven. Ball on the 34. Nowitzki with two receivers to his right. Omar Cisse guarding the slot. It's reverse going the other way. The line sniffed it out, and that's a big play by Yamir Lowry. It's third and seven. In a tough spot on the field for the Seagulls. If the Lions come up with a stop here, most likely it'll be a punt coming the other way, and they'll get the ball in pretty good field position. Nowitzki under center. Oh, there's a false start right on Lowry, I think number two right here on the end after the great play in the backfield. Now he's going to get called for this penalty. Let's see. False start number two in black. The refs conversing. Ooh, 
Ooh. That's going to be on Hopton Mare. We just heard his name as well with the rush. So Lowry jumped off because Mayer, slight movement. I, I didn't catch that one on the right-hand side. I saw our guy, but 11-11 left, and there's a penalty. And now it's third and 12. Very long here for the Seagulls, and it looks like they're going to be throwing it. Don't be surprised with this back in motion. Nowitzki in the shotgun. The hard count. Looking to throw. And almost intercepted. It was knocked down by Kamal Stewart, the senior cornerback, coming up with a big play. The Lions defense holding strong. And you could just see a difference in the energy on the sideline between the, this Lions team. Just keep it clean on special teams. Back to return is Kevin Zayner. Quick count. Yes, Lions have 11 on the field. 10.48 remaining in the third. And that's high and short. Depends on the bounce. Lions get away from it, and that's exactly why it bounces like that. And it's still going back. A uh, Lions bounce. It gets to about the 47-yard line, and that's exactly why you hear coaches and players yell back, 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 because a crazy bounce like that, if it hits off a Lions defender, that's a live ball going the other way. So good job by the special teams. Great job by the defense, that possession. And LaHaye about to get back on the field. He's 14 for 25, throwing 56% for 124 total yards, three touchdowns, and don't forget that two-point conversion. The Lions are not out of this yet. Let's put together another good drive. Four receivers lined up, two on each side. With Bootman in the backfield. LaHaye, low snap. He has time, nice block, and then he's sacked on the second effort. It looked like Josh Adume in on the play. Initially chip blocked by Bootman and he fought through that, got up, and still made the play. Great hustle by Adoue. Long second and 18 ball on the 49. Lions have to chip away after the 8-yard loss on the sack. LaHaye, same formation. Bootman to his left. Thorpe, excuse me, trying to get around the corner. That's going to be another loss. It's going to be third and maybe 21 or 22, depending on the spot. And the line should just be smart here, not do anything too reckless and cost themselves a turnover. You can get a nice punt and pin down the Seagulls within their own 10 or 15. It, it's tough on third and 21. LaHaye getting the signals from the sidelines. Look for Zayner. Right through the hands of Miller and Zayner. No, that was Zach Miller. Wrong call by the... Uh, Stadium announcer. I thought I was right from the start in all red. There we go. Correction. Zach Miller threw his hands almost intercepted. And how many times do you see the quarterback just stay in the backfield and turn into the punter? Only the Albright Lions. Let's see if they can get a clean punt off here and try and pin the Seagulls back and get this defense back on the field to make some plays. They've been swarming as of late. Nice little punt. See if you can force him out, and you do. Nice tackle, Omar Sase. And the Lions defense going to be back on the field. I guess when you have your backup punters, your quarterback, and you know we saw that shank in the first half, with LaHaye staying in on the punts, the special teams for Salisbury always has to be aware of the trick play because you're snapping it back to your quarterback, who's got plenty of time in the shotgun, right? So it's just another dimension to this Coach Marchka's 
scheme here. It just so happens that LaHaye is a pretty good boot as well. Lions come up with the gang tackle, gain of about four. In those situations, when you have the running back held up, that time it was hoped in Mayer. Someone's got to try and come in late and go for the strip. Lions have to try and reverse the field here, cause a turnover. Something late. It would be nice to get another couple of points before the end of this third. They've definitely been dominating the last about 15 minutes of game time dating back to late in the first half. Back in motion, Nowitzki looking to his right, and that's going to be a first down completed. That was Hunter Cleaver. He's had a couple catches tonight. Three to be exact. That'll give him about 30 yards with eight minutes remaining in the third. It's going to be first and ten on the 36, coming out of the huddle first is Leonard Prue, the sophomore wide receiver. He's lined up on this near side, guarded by Omar Sisse. Nowitzki in the backfield. And he fumbled it. It's a ball on the ground. Lions looked like they may have got someone on there. They need to be more adamant down in the bottom of that pile to dogfight anything could happen. And it looks like Nowitzki fell right back on top of it. But the Lions... With a nice play there, swarming the ball. It's going to be second and ten. Nowitzki getting lucky there on the miscom miscommunication, excuse me, on the snap. Second and ten, ball on the 36. Wide receivers on the outside. Three in the backfield. One in rotation. Nowitzki looking deep. He goes downfield and a little too far. That time, eyeing up Hunter Cleaver. Seven minutes now, and it's third and long. Ball on the 36. Again, it's 42-21. The Lions defense holding strong. The Lions bench trying to rally their teammates on the field. Nowitzki drops back again. Looking deep. Maybe been out of bounds. And he was just out of bounds. A nice catch on the near side. That was Jacob Phillip, but just out of bounds. It's going to be fourth and ten on the 36, and special teams comes on the field. Back to return is Kevin Zayner. Let's see if he can make a play here for the Lions. Put him in good field position. Lions close, but what a great punt. It's going to have to be a fair catch for Zayner. At the 25. Lions will have to march it 75 yards down the field to come up with their next set of points. It's 42-21, 6.48 on the clock. 74 yards, I guess, technically. Spotted at the 26. With LaHaye back on the field. Bootman getting into the slot there on the far side. He's flanked by Miller. And put Thorpe on the right side of Jimmy LaHaye. Incomplete intended for Zayner. LaHaye now 14 for 27. going to be second and ten on the 26. Uh -huh. 
Wow. I think he brought that in. That was Zach Miller falling backwards. Brings it in. They're going to give him the catch. That was a gain of a few. Third and seven. Six minutes to go, third and seven. And under pressure was LaHaye. He got smashed. And it'll be fourth down. And look at this Chris Knopp back on the punt. The past few times they've used LaHaye, but after that sack, coach wants to get him off the field, avoid any more unnecessary hits. Gets it away cleanly, that end over end. And do the Seagulls find a hole a little bit? Brought down by Harris Dorman, just across midfield. Nowitzki hands it off up the middle, gain of a couple. Breaking the huddle, second and seven. Just over five minutes remaining in the third. And that's a bouncing ball out to the receiver, number 12, Leonard Prue. Third and long. Oh, what a great play. The Seagulls earning that first down, just trickery. The lines were going every which way but the right way. And that's a big gain and a first down. They went from the 44 all the way down to the 25. And another converted third down. That clock keeps ticking away under four to play in the third. That was a 20-yard rush. More misdirection, this time right up the middle with Mike Morfo. Excuse me, Morfour. And a helmet came off there. Who was that? Number 94, Joshua Alexander, who was in on that tackle, lost his helmet, so he used to sit out this play part of the new set of rules. Nowitzki into the end zone. What a catch on the far side. I believe that's Damian King with his second touchdown. It is. Wow. Looking back over the shoulder in the corner of the end zone. 
and that ball was floated in beautifully by Nowitzki. King snatches it, gets two feet down. He only needs one anyway. And looking to make it 49 points is the kicker. We've seen him all night. Shrek and Ghost. And he is still perfect right down the middle. I hope you didn't park over there. My gosh, over the netting into the parking lot. Send some ball boy to go get that. At my old college, I went to Immaculata, and I, I did a couple of the sports there, and one of them was baseball. And left field was a short porch, and there wasn't too much of a netting because it was so short. It was almost like a green monster, but netting. And opposing teams would always come in and see closed parking spots to the field and be like, oh, we'll park right here. It's perfect. If there was a foul or home run ball down the left field line, you better watch out. I've seen a couple broken windshields. So I'd always park pretty far away behind home plate even. Not even go anywhere close. Been in this game too long. No, not where to park. That was Sean Carroll running on the field late, if you saw, as the kicker was taking his time counting, and I think there might be a stoppage for some reason. Not sure what the ref saw. He was just talking to Aaron Janke. Not sure what about. A low line drive kick to about the five-yard line, and Jordan looking to find a block. Brings it out to the 20. That was Bootman, excuse me. Forty nine twenty one three forty eight remaining in the third. And there is a flag on the field. Delay of game? Delay of game. Yep. Five penalty, first down. It's a five-yard penalty. The Lions first and 15 looking to throw, and it's intercepted. Headed the other way with blockers. Slicing, dicing his way towards the end zone. Sean Carroll beats a defender. Can he get a block? He does, and it looks like he dove in. Wow, what an athletic play by Carroll. Wow. Fifty six twenty one.
That's kicked short. Lions looking to return. Again, right about at the 20. That's where they've been all night long. Haven't had too many long returns. That was Mike Jordan. It's 56 21, 324 remaining in the third. And the Lions need to get on the field quick and get the playoff last time off the kickoff. They had that delay of game, and if you start first and 15, you're setting yourself so far back to shooting yourself in the foot. They had momentum there with that last drive of the first half coming out, scoring right away, had that lucky bounce off the kick. A couple things were going their way. Now they get a nice run, and that'll be a first down. Gain of 12. There you go, Bootman. He now has 20 yards rushing. Clock running, LaHaye in the shotgun. Two backs flank either side, and he gives it up again. This time, I believe, was Zayner? I didn't get a good look at that number. Roselli, excuse me, he's on the field. A nice gain. Second and five. I saw the three it was 33, not 13. That's the mistake. Look for Zach Miller in the slot here, cutting up the middle. There's a bigger linebacker on him. I think he could beat him with speed, only if LaHaye has enough time in the backfield. Low snap, they hand it off. Gain a couple or more. It's going to be third and two, I believe. And at this point in the game and where you're at on the field, it's two down territory. Try and stuff it up the middle here, get the first, keep the chains moving. Third down and two, ball on the 40. And you bring your big back in, Thorpe. The sophomore, 209 pounds. Let's see what LaHaye does here in the shotgun. Four receivers set. Miller resets. And there's some movement. Let's see what the ref calls. Oh, I wasn't even watching the clock. Apparently now there was the Lions. It's another delay of game. And that's a killer. Five-yard penalty makes it third and seven. And they go back to the 47. Or the, the other way, towards the 30. Wow. Under a minute to play in the third. Now an obvious throwing situation. At least at third and two you had options. LaHaye in the shotgun steps back. And too far out of bounds looking for Mike Jordan. Fourth and seven on the 35, and the lines look like they'll be punting. Five seconds. Lines have to snap it quickly. Oh, it's a bouncing ball in great hands in the backfield by Knopp. Wow. That could have been a catastrophe. Someone ran on late, and the Lions had to set with about four seconds left and snap it real quick. Avoid another delay of game. 
36 seconds remaining. And that rush might finish off the third quarter. The Seagulls in no rush to get back towards the huddle. We are headed to the fourth. It's 56-21. Ball on the 39. We're going to take a little break here. Stay tuned. Headed to the fourth. Second and four, we're back here for the fourth quarter. And it looks like the Lions held them. It's going to be third and short. Nowitzki staying on the field. Third and two. Keep an eye out for the quarterback keeper. We've seen it in these situations. He's shifty enough to make the first man miss and die forward. It's a long two yards. I'd put it more towards two and a half, three. And what did I say? Nowitzki, right up the gut, makes the first man miss, rumbles all the way to the 45-yard line. That was a 14-yard gain, tackled by Omar Cisse. Jack Lanham on the run. And right up the middle, straight to the end zone. That'll be a touchdown. Hopton Mayer with a 45-yard run. 62-21 early in the fourth as special teams comes on for the extra point.
Goodman on the return brings it out to the 21. Loss of five on the QB keeper. Todd Shelley in is the QB, by the way. Shelly trying to make the first man miss, and it's another sack, this time inside the 10-yard line. Todd Shelly sacks again, makes it third and 22. Just under 12 and a half remaining in this game. First one was a loss of four. That second one was a loss of eight. And it's third and very long. Lions try to get a few yards back. Fumble in the backfield. Lions get lucky. It'll be second and 12. Now second and 13, ball on the 46, 10-45 remaining. Couple backups on both sides of the ball. Looking for the screen, the Lions sniff it out. And they tackled Devin Folks in the backfield. Minnow got the tackle. They're going to list that as no gain. It's going to be third and 13 on the 46. Backs in motion. The big sweep. He's got a blocker in front. Can't convert it to a first down. It'll be fourth and about four. Thank <laughs> you. 
tried to get it on fourth and three and right through the hands of the receiver on the far side. It would have been a converted first down. Ends up incomplete on the turf. Lions get the turnover. The offense back on the field, led by number 15, Todd Shelley. 9-11 remaining in the game, 63-21. First and 10 on the 36. The Lions looking to end this game respectably. Got a couple points on the board. Was that one picked? No, they're going to say it hit the turf. Intended for Zach Miller. He's indicating to the quarterback, get it up a little bit for me. It was a nice route. Just couldn't bring the ball in. A little low. Second and ten. Hand off up the middle. Fighting for some yards is Bootman. It's going to make it a third and manageable. They have about three or four yards left. Lions need four yards. It looks like they're going to get it from Jordan. Forward progress is across that first down line. Jordan doing it all. Over 85 yards receiving, eight catches, averaging... About 11 and a half, and he has two touchdowns, don't forget. Doing it all for the Lions on the offensive end. Shelley drops back. Has to move out of the pocket. Looks to run, makes the first man miss, and gets a nice gain of about five. Shelley, good pocket awareness. Escapes quickly to his right sidestepping the linebacker who is coming up and gets tripped up in that second line. Back in motion. It was Bootman. They hand it off to Thorpe, who muscles his way very close. It's going to be third and in inches. the 43. Shelley throws it out wide to Bootman. He has to make the first man miss. He does, stiff arming him and getting tackled out of bounds. That'll be a first down for your Albright Lions. Six minutes left in the game. Shelley right up the middle. 
completed another diving catch. I feel like Zach Miller is always on the ground for these balls, and he reels that one in by his fingertips. Nice play by Miller, cutting up the middle. If he hit him a little more in stride, he could have been off to the races. Now it's the ball on the 29. Second down and one. Shelley drops back. Short again. Was this one behind the line of scrimmage is the question. I think it was. Referee didn't blow the whistle. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing officially from the scorekeepers next to me in the booth. They're calling that a backwards pass. So that was a live ball there on the ground. Smart play by Bootman. Four thirty remaining. Shelley now on third and eight after such a nice drive. They had one yard to go. If he sticks with it, right down the middle to Jordan, who gets another touchdown on the night. That's his third touchdown. A nice drive there by the Lions. The extra point will make it 63 to 28. So a three touchdown night for senior Mike Jordan. He's 148 yards, averaging 16.4 per reception, which he has nine of. Salisbury looking to take the air out of the ball and run this clock down. 427 remaining as the special teams come on the field. Kick is received at the 10 yard line and tackled at the 27. Chris Knopp with the line drive kick. Lanham still in the game under center it's a handoff to the right and tackled right away wouldn't be surprised if we see heavy run here to bleed out this clock it's second and ten
Backs in motion, looking to pass. They complete it. Everyone around the ball, and it should be third and short. Nice sack in the backfield. There is a flag on the field. If you can see right there at about the 38-yard line. Let's see what the call is. Decline penalty, it's now going to be fourth and long. That was a chop block. And the Lions send on Zayner to return this punt. Under three minutes to play. Fourth down and three. Zayner back to receive. It's a low punt towards the left. And it's going to be picked up by Joseph Manzo. First and ten lines take over on the 29. There's 234 remaining to see if they can drive down the field one more time. Up the middle to Thorpe. Barrels through a defender. Picks up six. Jordan makes a man miss and that'll be a first down it was a throw that slipped out of the hands of the backup QB Todd Shelley he picked up the fumble about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage and got off his second pass interesting play that would have been funny if that's how Mike Jordan got his fourth touchdown of the night. Just a quirky play. Minute 33 remaining. Speaking of Jordan, back to him. Little extracurriculars after that play. Minute 25 remaining. Thank you. 
Shelley drops back. Pass again to the far side. It's Miller who gets the first down. It's a first and ten, one minute remaining, ball on the 46. Shelley looks to get rid of it out of bounds. While we have a second here, it's second and ten. Let's take a look at the rest of the schedule, at least coming up. Their next game next week on the 14th on the road at Mary Hart and Baylor. Then back home for homecoming and Mac Commonwealth Action hosting DelVal. October 5th on the road at FDU Fordham. October 12th hosting Wilkes. Then on the road at Stevenson before coming back hosting Widener. Shelley dropping back. Looking deep. Can't find number 13 in black, Kevin Zayner. Third and ten. A handoff to Thorpe up the middle, and there's another late flag. That'll stop the clock. That would have done it, too, with under 40 seconds left. Let's see what the call is here from the back judge. You heard it there, offensive holding on the O-lineman number 72. It was the center, Jacob Banks, the sophomore. And this will probably be the last play of the game, depending on the outcome, as Shelley drops back. Three receivers to his left, one on his right, Thorpe up the right side and that should do it with 15 seconds remaining final score here at Gene L. Shirk Stadium on the home opener for the Lions 28 points the Salisbury Seagulls from Maryland came on the road, dropped 63 on us after a strong first half. The Lions fought back a little bit there, a couple consecutive touchdowns, a couple bounces went their way, but just not enough turnovers and penalties. Big plays for Salisbury. That was the name of this game. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to AlbrightAthletics.com. Like we said, next home game is on the 28th. It's going to be live on AlbrightAthletics.com. I will not be here. It is my brother's wedding. I'm the best man, so I do not know if they're going to have someone filling in. Regardless, make sure you tune in to all live home games here on AlbrightAthletics.com. I'm your man, Dave Molinaro. I'll catch you in a few weeks. Thank you.